floor to our Master of Ceremonies, and hopefully you'll be here next time. Thank you, Hugo. Thank you, Carlos. Now the next presentation is uh, by Eduardo Barasal Morales. He's the coordinator of the autonomous system of NICBR, who will speak of the uh, key um, management of the networks. Eduardo. Go ahead. Welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Eduardo, and I'm going to talk, I'm going to speak Portuguese. I am here to present something about some internet tools that you could use to improve the management of the network. My motivation here to present you is that these are of the same networks. It's because working with the network area is complex because it involves multiple autonomous systems. It's an area that is challenging. It's a critical area because you leave someone without the internet or somebody uh, will suffer. So at hospitals, we see hospitals, we see different companies that depend on the internet uh, uh, to do business. And so the network operators always need to make quick decisions to maintain uh, the network operational. And that is difficult, and the tools are there to help. So uh, telling you a bit, um, internet uh, has over 100,000 autonomous systems. Each of these are autonomous systems that communicate with each other, and it works like this. Use one sends the route to another to have a communications path. And if we look at um, the this uh, system as a whole, we can see that each acts independently and we only have control on our own network, but we want to communicate with other networks, so what do we need? We have to understand how the system works. It's complex so that when there are problems, we can make a decision to improve the network or the communication not to suffer that problem. If you understand that concept that we depend on the others, and we must understand how the entire system works. That's a big problem for the network administrator and the tools we have for us to make decisions to improve the networks. Here, I made a list of the tools that could help a network manager, administrator. Let me present the problems first. I want to show you some problematic situations that a network administration suffers on a daily basis and must manage to then solve and uh, that problem. So, for instance, maybe receiving an attack of another machine and he would like to see where the attack is coming from. So what tool could they use for that purpose? For instance, it's receiving an attack, starts watching the logs and wants to know who is attacking, why it's happening, maybe to block the traffic, to try to protect, and a tool that is important, and ma many of you know, is the who is. This is a database where you can look for domain, autonomous system information. There's a lot of information there. And this database is in several places around the world. There are many who is systems. They do not communicate with each other. Sometimes you have to look in one, other times in others. There are some who is tools that search for us, but it is through who is that we check who is responsible for the IP that is attacking. So imagine that here I want to use the uh, BR registry, so I'll see the IP that is attacking. I put it in the who is here uh, of the BR registry, and we have that information. And there we see the abuse uh, contact and the holders. Uh, contact and you can even see the email of the person so that you can contact to see whether the problem can be solved. The good thing about who is is that it's a public information data system that is undergoing some uh, changes because now they're speaking a lot of a uh, 
personal protection data. So, and the law in Brazil has an impact. So there are many who is that are removing much of the uh, data. So in many of them, the abuse contact continues to appear. So it is very important for us to update the who is um, and data because when somebody has a problem, they'll go there to identify the origin and uh, to solve the problem. So that would be the first tool. Another example, you receive many calls and you don't know what's happening. The network gets stopped, the, the connection is very strange, and after some time, everything goes back to normal. That is, there is continuity in the communication. Only you suspect that something happened because you had several calls in the call center. So somebody may have hijacked the prefix. There may have been a route leak, as they showed in the tutorials. Now, what? tool could we use to identify what happened and to prevent it from happening again. I like to uh, talk about this tool, the BG Play, that is a JavaScript uh, application. It uses a uh, route views uh, database, and it has the graphic rec uh, representation of what happens in a certain period of time. So you can select a time lapse, the IP uh, prefix, an autonomous system, and see what happens with a certain routing for a certain period. Unfortunately, here I have a static presentation. I can't enter these systems to show them to you. So I took the um, screenshots. And the good thing is that there are many videos that you can see on YouTube to present the routing problems. This was a problem that happened with Facebook. The people said um, YouTube clashed. Well, you can analyze in a certain period of time. And even in Ripe, you have BG Play. They use uh, BG Play as an, a tool open for for the public, and if I'm not wrong, it provides information for 48 hours, for two days of the events that occurred. So we can see in this tool if somebody started announcing the prefix at a certain time. So they hijacked the prefix, and here you will see who it was, and you can see all the routes starting to migrate to the other autonomous system, either because they are announcing a more specific our route or because they announce the same route but it's closer to autonomous systems and that is why the BGP made the route to be better than others. So we see what is happening globally with the routes with the routes that are being propagated. So there you see the incidents that appear in a timeline and you can identify what happened. It's an open tool. And so what I present is open tools that you can use to identify the problems and solve them. So this is a tool that's very good and many put many videos of, of this tool in YouTube so that you can load them in a certain autonomous system. So let's see another problem. For instance, a one of your customers cannot have access to their services. So you have a website with a web service, and all of a sudden you receive the message that say, I can't access your service. How can you see it from the perspective of the customer? How can you see the problem of uh, service connection? We could think of the looking, uh, public looking glasses. If you put it in um, Google, you'll find many uh, open uh, looking glass uh, uh, tools, and many providers offer them. The looking glass are routers in a provider, and they receive the routes, the information. And there, in that, that router, you can come in and give some commands, especially for visualization. But some of them allow you a ping, a trace route. So if you know, for instance, that your client is having access through a certain autonomous system from a certain provider and cannot have access, instead of trying to ping uh, them, you can see in the looking glass of the provider, and through the looking glass to ping on the system, and the web system and see what happens, where the problem is midway. It might be an internal problem of the autonomous system, but it could also be something halfway. It allows the, the pin 
and it also allow the looking glass allows you to see the BGP table. That is, how is it that the autonomous system is receiving the routes, uh, global routes? So if it is establishing the routes of the people connected. And there you can also see how your own route is reaching. So you look at the public looking glass and you export the, conf the route configuration that is presented. We have some that are command lines and others uh, you can access through the website. So here, to give you an example, I took DG8. Here you see that in the router that you're using in the web service, you can find several options. This is a client in G8 that has a problem. You may try and see from the uh, cl customer's point of view doing ping, IPv4, IPv6, this, it could be MTR, it could be the TIG of the host or the BGP. The nice thing about the looking glass is that it allows you, enables you to reject, that is to extract part of the information in a more simple manner. You don't have to look at all the routes in the world and do more and more lists to try to find your route. You can put filters to identify what's happening with your own route. So, the, in addition to this, I like to speak of Hurricane Electric that has a BGP toolkit. It's a web app that is in a website that uses data of Hurricane Electric, of route use, and other resources, and it shows it is in a graphic way. It's available in the internet, and the connections of a certain autonomous system, and the peers it's connected to, and other analysis. I'll, I, I'll leave you with some images that you can like, but if you use the Hurricane Electric, you Google it and you'll find it very easily. So it, in here in Colombia, the autonomous system is showing that they are using five prefixes in IPv4 that is working with RPKI IPv4, but it's not acting in IPv6. So just by looking with the autonomous system, it gives me all this information. And here you can see the transit here and their, their transit. How is it that it goes out in the world? How the routes are being propagated through IPv4 because they didn't have IPv6. So I took this in one of Colombia, I did a test, and it's showing how the routes are propagated globally. It's a very interesting tool because you can identify the communication path and see if there are any problems in the middle of the communication paths. It may be one of the autonomous systems, and it may be in uh, contact with the autonomous system, with the who is information, and several more. So it also shows you the prefixes that are being announced. You can see the five prefixes that are being uh, announced, uh, slash 16, slash 17, uh, 18. So it's a very interesting tool. Let's see another problem. We were saying that uh, it was in a tutorial. They said that peering is very interesting with regard to transit because uh, it's uh, free of charge. You don't pay for peering, so people uh, look more for peering. But of course, de depending on the distance, it may be very expensive to reach there. But peering seems to be more interesting than transit. So where can you find peering information? Where are the networks? Where are they located? So we want to reduce the provider cost so that everybody can uh, reduce their costs for you. And there you have the peering DB that is a database for the people to publish the peer um, uh, data connection. And that depends on collaboration. You have to register and publish the information. If everybody publishes the information, we have a robust uh, database that may be used by all. It is very important. You can find information of infrastructure, peering policy, um, internet exchange, IX, a flow analysis of the autonomous system of how much traffic is going to the autonomous system. And you can see, look for the autonomous system. You can, uh, you may try to find the autonomous system and you, and uh, you may want to see where the, uh, 
peering DB is in a certain data center, and you can st go to that data center and reduce your cost. So instead of your traffic leaving through your transit, it goes through the peering that is usually free of charge. So there are multiple advantages of participating in the peering DB. In addition to seeing information of others, others may see your information. That's why it's important to register. It's a, a very simple system. Here I put the information of Nick VR to show it to you. Here you have the peering policy. It has an open policy. Uh, everybody can now do peering with NIC BR. You see that sometimes there are more restrictive policies, more selective, and there you have to get in touch with the other autonomous system. But if it's, there's an open policy, it's enough to uh, talk and they will accept you to do peering with them. There you see whether they have IPv6, IPv4, and a bit more about the institution. That's another data source that you can use. Another interesting topic is that you, it shows the exchange of the participants. So the autonomous system is participating of certain internet exchange. Sometimes you can look for it directly, or you can look for the internet exchange to exchange the traffic. So when you obtain uh, traffic going to different autonomous systems, it might be you, it hard for you to do the transport in an autonomous system. So you may save time if you do peering in that, with that autonomous system. Here we have another problem. For instance, a certain machine does not manage to communicate with another. We start to wonder, is am I the problem or is it somebody else's? When So we want to see whether the system, whether we are having connectivity problems or it's um, uh, so there are several tools that we can use. One is the down detector, and the the other one is down for everyone or just me. So there you can identify per service or also to identify if a site is accessible for you or for other people. So with a down detector, you want to know whether there's an outage. Um, and there it will show you that there were some incidents reported, but not so many. And what were the problems that were identified? Connection with the server. So there may have been a communication problem. There was also a login a problem. It may be an app problem. So this is information that the network administrator manages to have to inform the clients. Because very often, they want to access to a certain service. Here we have down for everyone or just me. It's very simple and it's accessible. Is it accessible for me or not? Is it uh, down for me or for all? So you put here, I put Netflix, for instance, and it tells me you are the only one with a problem. The rest uh, of the world has access to Netflix. So sometimes you may try to have access to a website, you can look for that, and it will tell you if you are the only ones or everybody. And there, they have servers distributed in the world, and they do the same depending on the URL that you show, and they show you whether it's your problem or it's a general problem. I'd also like to say that in this area of network administration, it's good to be united. We sometimes think that the autonomous system competes against the other, but if we think as network administrators, we want the internet to be better for all. So it's important for us to share the information. The most interesting thing in our area is to participate in some mail groups. Here I leave with you some Brazilians, GTR, the KU, the GTS, where you can register. The, well, the debates are in Portuguese, but nothing that a Google translator can't help you translate. And you also have those of LACNIC and LACNOG and NANOG and others of the Brazil Peering Forum. So share the information. If you have any problems, publish your information. Others may have the same problem that you have and, set, and solve that problem uh, together. And don't suffer alone. Publish that information and help the rest. So we've seen that the internet is formed uh, with different autonomous systems, each trying to communicate with the other. So we all need to communicate with the problems and not just with the data. 
basis. And it's not difficult to find in other social media uh, discussion groups, such as Telegram, Facebook, WhatsApp. Uh, so, so if you look for that information in Google, there's always somebody publishing in social media to try to put together a response groups or working groups where, when there are problems. So don't work alone. This is a very useful tool to manage uh, to publish the information, request for assistance, the information groups in your country. It's very important for them to participate, for you to participate. Well, this is what I wanted to share with you about the tools. Unfortunately, here I can't open them to show you in the computer, but I wanted to tell you because sometimes we have a problem and we don't know what can be of help. So it's good to have a fan of tools to find the problem and solve it. So here, I open uh, the space for questions. And uh, we have, uh, in YouTube, we have a, rec uh, a video of Nick PR where we show how we use each of these tools. Uh, yesterday, it was a three-hour presentation. Now we only have 20 minutes. So we'd like to leave some room for questions. Thank you, Eduardo. That was an excellent presentation. We already have uh, two questions. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I appreciate this. I wonder if you, uh, the uh, down for everyone or just me and down detector, do you know if they test both IPv4 and IPv6, or if they just do a, a curl or W get or to just see if the if anything responds. Well, I didn't see those details. I just saw IPv4 and IPv6, but uh, I do see that in some cases, if you have IPv4, or IPv6, you. It gives you a generic response. I didn't get into those details, but in the documentation that is explained. Ariel, just to give you an additional thing that I think is very interesting, there's a Unix um, a tool. There's a people that developed MTR. Uh, this age, there's, it's a very comprehensive looking glass with a lot of tools and you can, it's, I think it would be good for everyone to include it in the toolkit. Thank you for the contribution. I agree with you that when you, when you have a three hour uh, presentation, there are many tools that you could uh, tell you about. And there are other tools, the people have advised that problems are appearing. Unfortunately, uh, it's, uh, there are some ideas that uh, you can't, uh, and, but unfortunately, we can't do that. There are some comments, and uh, there are people that are thanking you for the presentation where they are linking the channel of YouTube of Nick BR. One more. We have time for one more. I'm from Brazil of the IFN. Eduardo, I see what you said about one of the who is tools to use as information, information related to IP blocks and providers and AS numbers. But how is the situation with the change of who is for word up? Is there any information as to whether it's updated, if it was implemented? Because who is is not only a service, it's an old protocol, and the people are changing. The name continues to be who is because it's already very well known. But we see that it has changed because who is as a protocol is very old. But the name continues to be the same. Well, thank you, Eduardo. That was an excellent presentation. A round of applause for Eduardo. And I give the floor to Sandra again. Thank you, Carlos.